deep seek, deep research, operator, agents, and that's just in the last six weeks of 2025. What if we could peer into the AI roadmap of tech giants and see what they're building behind closed doors? Today, that's exactly what the neural is bringing you. We've gathered C-suite leaders from NVIDIA, ThoughtWorks, Samanova, Avamo, and Global Fashion Group to reveal the actual developments reshaping AI in 2025. These are insider insights from the architects building tomorrow's AI reality, and they're sharing critical points that AI teams might be missing. Give a listen. A lot of exciting innovations, especially in the field of LLMs, um, now with DeepSeek uh, in, the, in, the, in the mix as well. But I see where we are moving forward in 2025 is definitely the industry. 2025 is a really exciting year if you are in the enterprise AI space. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I think there are three key trends that are really going to drive a lot of interesting things. 2025 is, there's a non-trivial probability that this becomes the breakthrough year for text, speech, video, and image. This is the future where we kind of uh, have models operating based on what is the need. And this naturally leads us to the uh, other area where, which is very exciting, which I'm really excited about. It's, I think a lot of that is going to happen over the next year or so. But let me uh, step back a bit. And last but not least, I do think, you know, what DeepSeek has shown us. It's like, for example, AI systems today excel in language processing, LLMs, or image processing, some of the multimodal models. Um, so those are the examples of how LLM kind of adapts to your domain and your context. Now we are going to see a lot more of... Welcome to the Neural Talks, your gateway to the forefront of AI innovation. I'm your host, Ranjit Malarkot, and together we'll explore the AI revolution with the brightest minds pushing boundaries and shaping the future. Through candid conversations, they share hard-won insights as we unlock the transformative power of AI. Get informed, get inspired. This is the future, and you're in the front row. 2025 is going to be the, the year of scaling and expansion of AI. Up until now, we have mostly focused on text and LLM models, and we are seeing that these models have become uh, extremely strong in performance, and we are seeing a proliferation of different foundational, well, now they're called frontier models, from not only closed source um, uh, companies like OpenAI and Anthropic, but also um, uh, the open source models from Meta and whatnot. But we're going to see an expansion into multimodal. We're going to see a lot more uh, like Sora come out, where we are going to look at image generation, video generation, multimodal models, which combine text, speech, video, and image. This is the future where we kind of uh, have models operating based on what is the need. And this naturally leads us to the uh, other area, where, which is very exciting, which I'm really excited about, which is agentic systems. Up until now, we have seen uh, AI simply be a chatbot, which is answering your questions. We are going to start to see the uh, growth and uh, expansion of agentic systems, which means agents that can plan and self-organize and self-execute on a task using maybe one or more models. This is very much similar to the kind of thing that you saw with uh, the chain of re reasoning model from uh, OpenAI. And we're going to see uh, a proliferation of such models which can combine an ensemble of models to do a higher level task. So it's a very exciting year. I believe we are just scratching the surface. We have just started to see the, the impact of AI in the next Two to three years, I uh, see a massive hockey stick scaling in both the availability of models and use of models for complex uh, applications and tasks. Uh, hello to everyone. I'm pleased to uh, have, you know, I offer my perspectives on what's happening in 2025. I think in 2025, um, I feel, you know, we're going to build on what happened in 2024. A um, lot of exciting innovations, especially in the field of LLMs, um, now with DeepSeek uh, in, the, in, the, in the mix as well. But I see where we are moving forward in 2025 is definitely the industrialization of factories and warehouses. You can see smart cities, uh, smart hospitals, smart warehouses, where you see a mix of multiple AI entities, you know, whether it's um, 
outside in perception or robots working together along with humanoids i think a lot of that is going to happen over the next year or so but let me uh, step back a bit and let me offer a little bit of perspective on what ai means to software engineers i know there's a lot of um, angst and nervous feelings among software engineers about whether ai is going to take a jobs i would say you know it's think of it as a first industrial revolution where people were concerned that ai is going to take their jobs i don't think that's going to be the case it's going to be up leveling your skill set so i would encourage software engineers to take advantage of copilot tools just cursor kodi etc uh, the github code pilot is another one um where you can improve your productivity have ai write unit tests for you have ai explain code for you i mean all these tools do that today it enables you to be more productive but at the same time it's not going to completely do your job for you because at some point you have to determine did ai do the job that you ask it to do did it do it the right way was it completely right was it partially right was it completely off the mark for that we still need humans and we need people with strong fundamentals so i would encourage software engineers please you know use ai as much as possible to improve your productivity for those product leaders who are looking at how you can leverage ai in your day to day life think of it as an incremental or think of it as a journey or or an incremental series of steps you don't have to solve or boil the ocean from day zero right so if you want to essentially use ai say for instance if you're thinking of customer service um where you want to essentially have ai take over some of the day to day product queries which are pretty straightforward um what you can do is you can pot- potentially take an llm um augmented with a rag a retrieval augmented generator and train it on your product manual for instance um and then it can answer questions about tr- general troubleshooting stuff maybe 70 to 80% of your customer queries are stuff that's already there in your product guide so those questions can be taken over by ai thereby freeing up your valuable customer resource specialist for something that is far more critical that really requires human inter- human intervention again this could be customer service and this customer service can apply towards many industries right or many verticals and um for people who are looking at um uh, you know uh, from an infrastructure standpoint i think you should look at how you can leverage your existing infrastructure to do more the folks at deep seek have done an excellent job in 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 kind of showcasing the way for us necessity drove in, in innovation in china because they had a scarcity of gpu resources so they literally maximized in terms of what they can do in terms of training and inference with what they currently have so i would encourage data scientists and researchers and everybody who's looking at adopting ai to look at recent publications because there's so much information in there that can drive the next level of innovation so um so definitely encourage you to do that and uh, and i'm looking i'm i'm excited and looking forward to what happens in 2025 2025 is a really exciting year if you are in the enterprise ai space you know as far as i'm concerned i think there are three key trends that are really going to drive a lot of interesting things in 2025 first and foremost is agentic ai or ai agents these are the next generation sophisticated agents that can reason that can plan and that can take action so we already started to see some version of this in the consumer space where you could have your assistants plan a trip and say now hey plan a 3 day trip to napa and it can do a lot of interesting things for you now put this in the enterprise context and things that you could ask could be something like hey i ran three marketing campaigns last year can you tell me the impact of these marketing campaigns on my revenue and which regions were affected and how do i plan my next gen- next campaign so that i can have a big impact in a particular region right being able to do these kinds of sophisticated kind of you know, questions tying into existing enterprise assets tying into enterprise content and responding is where these next generation ai agents are going to go the second thing is what i call explainability where going beyond citations this is really ai explaining itself and saying you now how did it come up with the answer what kind of guardrails were put and that is going to be really important in terms of being able to explain what's going on behind the scenes 
And last but not least, I do think, you know, what DeepSeek has shown us is this whole AI model business is a race to zero. There's going to be a lot more focus on applications and interesting kinds of AI applications that are going to be built on top of the networks. And that's really where all of us should be focusing our energies on. Hey, Rajit. Um, for me, one major thing to look forward to, and this might sound like a bit of pie in the sky as this guy, but I think 2025 is, there's a non-trivial probability that this becomes the breakthrough year for, you know, attainment of artificial general intelligence. Um, and, and for those of us students of tech and AI, it's essentially the hypothetical stage in AI development where a machine is able to handle any intellectual task a human can do. And you know, it's able to do this without domain-specific limitations. Like, for example, AI systems today excel in language processing, LLMs, or image processing, some of the multimodal models. But with AGI, as artificial general intelligence is called, it yeah. would learn, reason, and adapt across virtually any area. Uh, it's able to apply knowledge gained in one context to a wide range of unrelated challenges. So I think, for me, that's one of the most exciting things to look forward to over the next couple of years. And I think, you know, it, with AGI will also come quite tremendous changes to the way the world operates, right? And I, again, it's a bit of looking into the crystal ball for me, but I, I feel like we are ever closer to this than we've ever been. Um, and I think 2025 potentially is the year where, the, where AGI breaks through. I mean, more closer to the ground and closer to reality, um, where 2025 is going to be exciting for AI for tech practitioners in general is, uh, again, adaptability. It comes from agentic systems. So today, you know, I'll give you some simple example. I'm editing a document. In the document, I, I write some prose. I have some sort of writer's block. So I use an LLM to say, can you rewrite this, you know, improve the tone, improve the grammar, the spelling. It does it maybe one, two times. I copy that back into my document. I do this across a bunch of things. But perhaps what agentic systems can do is takes us to the next level, right? So if I fire off an email for a specific approval or a, let's say an ERP workflow, uh, somebody says, can we buy this? It's, this is the budget. This is the proposal. And I say, yes, approved. You know, an agenting system would com consume the email, process the content, and then trigger off a bunch of automated workflow steps, you know, send the PO for approval, trigger a next year approval, seek a consent there, close the process, and then perhaps trigger a payment. So that's, it's a small example, but, you know, there's there's a bunch of agentic workflows that um, I think will see the light of day in the next uh, two to three quarters. It's, it's really hard to predict what's going to happen this year uh, in this space, but uh, a few trends that I think are quite interesting is um, the way the LLMs are now evolving, right? Um, we... We had just an assistant uh, LLM. Now we have more of a thinking and reasoning kind of uh, uh, capabilities in the LLMs, uh, be it uh, uh, O1 and O3 right now uh, in preview or the deep sea car ones of the world. Uh, so we're going to see a lot more of different kinds of LLMs. So there is no one model to do everything so you have to pick and choose what is the right model and in which capacity you should be using so that is that innovation happening inside the llm there is a lot more happening on how you use the model to solve your problem right um we had this concept of in context learning like you might have heard of rag and few short prompting and such um, so those are the examples of how llm kind of adapts to your domain and your context now we are going to see a lot more of what we call as test time learning meaning that uh, models are not just trained during their pre-training and fine-tuning. They can also be adjusted. Their weights can also be adjusted during the inference time. So this is uh, this is something new that's going to uh, unlock a lot of potential um, because it fundamentally alters our mindset that there is this training phase and there is an inference phase, right? So that's, that line is going to blur a lot more this year. So that's something I'm quite uh, quite interested and excited about. Um, things that we should watch out is a lot of people jump into a conclusion um, that if the context window grows and you don't need a lot of good engineering, you don't need to do your information retrieval well, uh, those things really matter still. 
um so my advice or my recommendation would be that um uh, get to know the internals of how these models work so that you can design a better product for your company for your enterprises hope you enjoyed this episode of the neural talks hit subscribe or follow us on linkedin to stay informed of many more great episodes on ai coming up where the neural where humans meet ai